be good to get some thoughts on something that seemed to take a lot of attention and get a lot of media last year. And that is, when we think about real assets or we think about the right kind of assets that will preserve them, them, their asset value during um, you know, suspect markets and times of challenge, uh, the cryptocurrency space. 2020 was definitely a year of outstanding return for the market. But what we found it was that it was an exceptional year for us to uh, do a lot of education with our investor base. We talked a lot about what the benefits and the ability to understand the gold market and the behavior of gold and how one should understand it as a component of a portfolio. It's gotten a lot of attention and traction. We've got countless examples of real money accounts, pensions, and, 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 uh, and, and endowments and foundations making allocations to gold. Um, but it does come up regularly, and, and you have some interesting perspectives on Bitcoin. I thought I'd give you a moment to, uh, to share some of those thoughts with us. No, I appreciate that. And I was, uh, 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 you mentioned uh, Forbes, I was brave enough five or six months ago to wade into this uh, discussion with an article that maybe Bitcoin was going to become the new gold. And the, you know, the pro arguments at the time um, were, were that it is not controlled by any central government, which we like about gold. It's not controlled by central banks. It's maybe even better than gold in that respect, because banks are heavily involved in gold. Um, and it has a absolute, if you believe the technology, I'm not a programmer, but if you believe the technology, it has an absolute supply of 21 million Bitcoin, and that's it. So it will become, if that's all true, potentially a great store uh, of value. I did some math, which people can find at Forbes, and found that if you put 1% into Bitcoin and it achieved all the goals of the Bitcoin uh, bulls, you actually uh, were fine holding gold as well, and you would not lose any sleep, money, or anything. Um, now I'm probably going to get some grief because I just wrote an article, uh, and that was with Bitcoin at, at roughly... Um, I think it was 18,000, there's a date stamp. Uh, recently, Bitcoin was up in the 40,000s, and we re-looked at the data, we have tons of quantitative modeling, and we found a couple things. During that six month period, Bitcoin had lost a lot of market share inside the crypto world. That didn't feel right to us. Uh, number two, it, it showed no correlation to gold whatsoever during that six month period. And number three, the volatility was was going way too high to be considered an institutional type investment. And so we pulled the plug uh, on that. And we'll constantly look at it. But for now, gold's 3,000 year reign for us is still intact. Um, and that is, and I am a proponent of cryptocurrency, decentralized finance, all of that becoming quite big over the next decade or two, more than I even understand, I'm sure. But my point is, at the moment, Bitcoin does not for us fill that role of, you know, of, of a alternative currency. That's a really interesting perspective, Bob. And, and we spent a lot of time, probably over the last three to four years, really analyzing DeFi, really understanding the blockchain space. Uh, and I think um, what we've learned and what we've been helping the investor community to understand is don't allow yourself to get excited by the return profiles and start conflating different opportunities and areas of potential real change and impact to the market. We, we believe that the blockchain is fantastic technology here to stay. Whether or not that Bitcoin investment is the only and best way for you to express your interest in it, if you choose to go down that path, you really need to understand that, like you've said, volatility and correlations feel an awful lot more like a tech stock than they do gold. And in terms of when you look at gold and its drawdown period, so if you take any example of major drawdowns in markets, global financial crisis or, or, or 2012, you'll find that gold performs well in those moments and the recovery period is exceptional as well. So it rides the curve on both sides. And actually, that's not what we're seeing in terms of correlation with, with Bitcoin as it relates to risk assets. It feels risk on, risk off, lots of return potential, lots of rolling and, and, and exciting rides along the way. I completely agree. And I, uh, as I wrote, I'm not, I'm not the expert, but at a high enough level, I think you have to separate Bitcoin from Ethereum, so to speak, and Tether. They are really each trying to do completely different things. So the word crypto is great, but if you're looking for an alternative currency, 
you, you can really eliminate Ethereum and eliminate Tether and just focus on Bitcoin. We don't eliminate the other two in thinking of them in the equity world, like as potential right. investments. Um, but again, we have this kind of crazy, we don't think it's crazy, but you know, view of these four asset classes. And once you get into one of our asset classes, that's very important. We want to now completely make sure you belong there. And, and right. so that's why we had to kick Bitcoin out of the gold asset <laughs> class. One quick last question. We have a few minutes left. If you could just give us just a few thoughts in terms of your outlook for the remainder of the year and anything that you think people might want to hear uh, to kind of watch for. Yeah. So in the, it, you know, in the short term, uh, gold's had a pretty good run in the very short term, right? Coming off of, um, coming off of a correction from highs, all, uh, near all time highs or all time highs. And uh, we think what people should focus on uh, for the rest of the year is we're going right now into an economic phase change. The second quarter is a boom quarter due to reopenings and um, obviously due to all the stimulus. So we're going to have a GDP quarter, uh, probably the highest in my life, uh, this quarter. The back half of the year that the GDP should still be reasonably good, but it's going to be lower. So we're going back into a uh, probably a string of lower real GDP periods. The, the key argument, I think, for gold is what's going to happen with inflation? We've got higher inflation than anyone expected. Even the Fed is saying they're surprised by it. We continue to print money. And the real question is, do we have a, just a transitory period and then we go back down to 2%? Or has all of this stimulus, maybe the weaker dollar as well, created a new higher uh, trading uh, level for inflation? And if that's the case, and that's the case we believe in, the Fed will have to make a decision Will they leave rates at zero against a three and a half or four percent inflation rate? And I would invite your listeners to go back and look at any model of gold that shows um, gold versus real rates. And if real rates are going to be negative three to four percent for a sustained period of time, cha-ching for gold. That's all I can say. That's the choice <laughs> the Fed will have to make in the next quarter or two. Great. Bob, you know what? It's fantastic insight. We share your views on real rates, watching the space very carefully. That's a global phenomenon, even more so than just, just a U.S. perspective. We see it in Europe as well. It's been great to chat with you today. Thank you for your time, and uh, we hope to have you back soon. Thanks a lot, Joe, and thank you for, for offering me the time. <laughs>